I would like to go over another very similar set of RN exercises because I do feel that RN is a little bit confusing, mainly because the vectors themselves and their representation in the component space have the same form. They're both sets of numbers. So it takes a little bit extra care to keep the two straight. So I'd like to go over a few more examples to show you how to do that. And also for the last linear transformation that I selected, apparently I didn't give it enough thought, and we had square roots in the eigenbases, which was a little bit distracting. So I now chose another linear transformation, which doesn't have any roots in that very special basis. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to consider the very same arbitrary basis as we did for the original linear transformation and compute the corresponding matrix. Then we'll, we won't consider the standard basis, which of course leads to a matrix that's exactly the same as the matrix that defines the linear transformation. That's the very special property of the standard basis. And finally, we consider this basis, which looks random at first, but then we'll realize that these are actually the eigenvectors of this linear transformation, which will lead once again to a diagonal matrix. This of course is a very general rule that an eigenbasis leads to a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. But, but before we show it in the very general case, it's nice to see it in a specific case. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. So now I'm realizing I didn't leave myself much working space, so I'll use it here. So the strategy, as always, is to apply this one linear transformation to each of the basis elements. And then that's not what goes into this matrix. It's the coefficients of these resulting vectors with respect to the same basis that appear in the columns of that matrix. So applying this linear transformation to the first basis element, 1, 1, 1, we get minus 4, 0, 4. So minus 4, 0, 4. So we must have 4 of this element. That's the only our only chance to get a 4 in the last entry. So to get 0, now I need to have minus 4 here. So, so, so far we have 4, minus 8, minus 4, and we need to end up with minus 4, so 0. So 4, minus 4, 0. And I totally messed up. No, I did it all right. All right, 4, negative 4, 0. 4, negative 4, zero. That's column number one. Now column number two. Apply the same linear transformation to this vector. And of course we get minus eight plus three. Minus five, two, and minus fourteen plus five, nine. Nope, minus fourteen plus five, negative nine. Okay, since the numbers are Awkward, let's do it one more time. Minus eight plus three minus five, two plus zero, two minus 14 plus five, I'm looking here, minus 14 plus five minus nine. So we need minus nine of this one. So we now have minus nine here and we need to get all the way up to two. So 11 of this. Okay, and now in the first entry we have minus 9 plus 22, 13, and we need to get to minus 5, so negative 18. I'm not going to double check this, I hope it's right. Negative 9, 11, negative 18. All right, let's just hope that's right. And finally, for the last column, well that shouldn't be too hard, we need to apply the same linear transformation to the third element of the basis. And of course, we just get the first column of this. So negative four, one, and seven. Now we need to decompose this. The result of applying this transformation to the third basis element in terms of this basis. So once again, we need seven here. That gives us seven here and we need to have one. So negative six. So in the first position, we now have seven minus 12 minus five and we need to have minus four, so one. So seven, negative six, seven, negative six, and one. And the main takeaway of this example is that the resulting matrix is completely different from the matrix that defines the linear transformation. 
So in, for all but one basis, the representation of the linear transformation in the component space is different from the matrix that defines it in the actual space. That one exception, of course, is the standard basis for which the uh, component space representation is exactly the same as the matrix that defines it. So we're now through two of the bases. So now let's deal with this one, the eigenbasis. And I'll just apply this transformation to each one of these elements and write the result here. So applying this same transformation to 1, 0, 1, we find minus 1, 0, minus 1. Minus 1, 0, minus 1. And lo and behold, does it fit? Uh, let me just make sure. Yes, it does. That the result is a straight multiple of the input vector. So even though this would not typically be a very easy basis to eyeball decomposition with respect to for an arbitrary vector, but with this one, it couldn't be simpler because it's a straight multiple of this one. So our coefficients would be minus 1, 0, 0. And why is this so nice? Well, that's because this happens to be an eigenvector of this transformation. And because it is an eigenvector, the result is the eigenvalue times the input vector. And of course, that also makes this decomposition very simple. It's just minus 1 of this one, 0 and 0. So minus 1, 0, 0. Now let's deal with the second vector in the basis, which is also an eigenvector. So it's column 2 minus column 3. 0, 1, minus 1. 0, 1, minus 1. That's the output. 0, 1, minus 1. And you can see it's an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 1. And of course, it's completely straightforward to decompose this vector with respect to this basis. It's clearly 0, 1, 0. So 0, 1, 0 goes into this column. And for the final one, I guess it's a little, the vector itself is a little bit more involved, but let's see what happens. We have this minus this, negative 7 plus 9, 2, 2. Then this minus this plus 3 times this, so minus 2. And finally, this minus this, that's minus 12 plus 18, 6. As you can see, this is twice the input vector. And to decompose this vector with respect to this 3, it's obviously 0, 0, 2, and no other linear combination. So the final column is 0, 0, 2. And we finally see what I think is the main takeaway from this entire video, which is in the case of an eigenbasis. The resulting matrix is a diagonal matrix with the corresponding eigenvalues on the diagonal. And you can also tell exactly what would happen if we took these eigenvectors in a different order. We would just have the eigenvalues on the diagonal in a different order, in the order exactly corresponding to the order of the eigenvectors. So that completes this example.